Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here today and we're rejoicing in knowing that the Word of God is going to all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. And we are studying the greatest blessings of every person that don't know Christ. And that is the great tribulation, Armageddon. And the reason I'm here is because the Lord has called me. I've only served him for f over 40 years. And he has called me to get that out to the people that don't know Christ as Savior. My heart has been burdened since I saw what's going to happen those seven years. But you see, the best part about all of us that know Christ as Savior will be in heaven. At Revelation chapter 4, we're going to be raptured to be with the Lord. And this is the greatest gift that you can know today, that you can be a child of God and obey Him and you will be taken into heaven and not have to go through all of the things that are happening to those people. And here is a Bible verse that shows you, and you need to write these down, that shows you, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, this is a people that their spirit and soul have gone to be with the Lord and their body goes back to dust. And this is what we see when we see this and see them going up and coming out now. These are the people that have the spirit and soul is in heaven and this is the people that have not died and they are waiting for this to happen. And this could be any of us at any time. This is happening today, preparing for the great tribulation. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see what we have in him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see what's happening today is there are too many gods and there's only one in the whole Bible, Jesus Christ. In Christ we have redemption through his blood. It has to be through the blood of God. So we can't use the things of the world to get to heaven. We have to obey the word of God by his own blood Christ entered in once into the holy place. And this is a blessing for every person that don't know Christ to know even today the Spirit of God is the eternal Spirit. Eternal revelation, Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living and true God. He's the living God. He's omniscient. That means he's all-knowing, all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's ever present with us. He's in us. We have his holy temple dwelling in us and his pure blood. He had, he's the only person that shed his blood and it was pure blood so we could have eternal life and have the spirit of God dwelling in us. And then he says in the greatest blessing for everybody, omnipotent, all powerful, He's all powerful. So here we see in Matthew eleven twenty seven, all things are delivered unto of me unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him through the Spirit of God. And this is the most important message you will ever have because you can't get to heaven without the Spirit of God. And this is, listen at this, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. 
And this is how you can know because he says in Second Peter, for the prophecy came not in old time, but by the will of man spake as they were moved by the Spirit of God. We have to have the Spirit of God to know the Word of God. And now here's what you need to know the Spirit of God because these are the most difficult times that people are wanting to know what is wrong that people are not obeying what God's Word says. And you, if we don't obey Him, we can never be born again. So this is why we must see and know the Word of God and to know what God's Word says and obey it and live for Him. Revelation, John chapter 4, verse 23. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for safety. Salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall serve, worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. Verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee and praise Thee for these truths that are going to all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. He said, I've set before Thee an open door and no man can shut it. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And this is why we're giving these out so every person can know that they are born again by the Spirit of God and that we have His eternal blood dwelling in us. So we're asking today for every person to do what God's Word says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we're committing this to thee, to every person that's here in today, and we thank thee and praise thee for one hundredfold. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So today we're going to study, since we've already been through most of these lessons, and we will be finishing these, and they are the very best. And now this is in Revelation 18, the Babylon, the city, and its final doom. This is the most important thing for every person to understand. This is why I prayed and asked the Lord to let me live till I get these to all the world, because that's what His Word says. And this is the greatest blessing. Revelation 18, verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. Now this is Revelation 18, verse 2. You write these down because you can't just hear me one time. You have to study these and know what's happening. Having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Now these are the things. This is the angelic host announcing the Babylon, the city, and its final doom. And this is another thing that you have to understand. There's two final classes, two events that are happening right now. They're already beginning. The fine eternal order are these who overcome. That's the people that are ready to meet, go to heaven. And those cast into the lake of fire are those that have never received Christ as Savior. Now this is one of the most important lessons you're going to hear because it could happen at any time 
that you could be raptured to be with the Lord or you could be going to the seven year tribulation period and that is satanic powers and we're in heaven. We go to heaven in Revelation 4. So we, he says in chapter 2, now you have to understand, verse 2 in Revelation 18, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful thing. And now this is a Bible verse that you have to have because there's only two of these events. And this is the most important thing for everybody to learn. Two tremendous events that are going to happen. The marriage of the Lamb celebrated in heaven and in the marriage supper in heaven. The event of the Lord is the great day of wrath as king of kings, the slaughter on the earth. This is the day of wrath of Armageddon, and this is the most fearful. That's why I don't want anybody to go there, because Christ didn't make hell for people. Now listen to this, the marriage of the Lamb, the most blessed and happy of all events that have occurred so far in creation. And now those that don't know Christ are going to go to this awful place. It's all the wrath of God. You see why I'm here today? I want every person in the world to go to the place that God has prepared for us. And then in chapter four, four and five, three, four and five, the call to God's people to flee out of Babylon. Every one of you should flee to God right now. Get the word of God and read the book of John through. And then he says in three, four and five, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed. This is fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Verse 5, for her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquity. He knows our heart. We can't hide anything from him. And this is why you have to turn to God today. Tomorrow may be too late. And then verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Rem for, this is the most amazing thing. Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her, double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Now that we come now to chapter 12, verse 12 through 17. Now you have to know these and learn them. You have to study these. Verse 12, the merchandise dyes of gold and silver and precious stone. What everybody's wanting today are things. We're not going to take one thing with us. Listen at what everybody was doing with Babylon, doing all of these things that they cannot do one thing about, and they don't even know Christ. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all tie and wood. Now, I'm not going to read all of this today because it's the most amazing things in the world, but you have to read it to understand what God is doing and telling us. And then verse 14, and the fruits that my soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. 15, the merchants of these things which was made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. 
This is a kind of thing that's going to happen. And saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearl. Verse 17, for in one hour, listen at this, this is Revelation 18, 17, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught and every shipmaker and all company in the ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. And then we have to read verse 18 and 19. Listen at this, what's going to happen. The final, this is the final great sin of all of the people that are working for things and don't know Christ. This is commerce, it's called commerce. And this is, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaker and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, verse 18, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, Babylon, everything on this earth is going to burn up. All of the riches that you have, you're not going to take one thing with you unless you obey the Lord and serve Him. Go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All you have to do is to pray for me. My website, my YouTube is getting so many great blessings. And herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Pray for me for a hundredfold. I have prayed for that for over one, over 40 years, for 100 fold, for all of you that are lost. And this is why I'm here today for you. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and railing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich, all of them. Riches cannot do one thing for us that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she was desolate. You see, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and be holy apostles and prophets, and God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone of great millstone, and cast it into the sea. Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Everybody that's going to leave this place, if you're not in heaven, Satan will kill you if you don't take the number 666 in your forehead and in your hand. And if you, if you don't do that, he will cut your head off, he will kill you, and you will go into heaven. That's the people that don't know Christ, that's never heard these stories. And this is why you have to know him. And then the, this is the, the most amazing thing, the awful curse of sin. This is sin. That's all they had lived for. They don't live the word of God and obey him. And he did not make hell for people. Hell is going to be, this is the saddest thing in the world for everybody to understand. Now I want you to listen in chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That is not made for people. Here's what God made for people for us, the heaven. We have the greatest, this is made of pure gold. And we are going to be raptured, and it's not going to cost one thing. He has everything already made for us to give us everything. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. 
All of this is what he has waiting for us. And then listen, the joy of heaven is a final event for all of us. It is a perfect place and we are going to have a perfect body and nothing, no sin in heaven, nothing but his divine love for all of us. And then when we think, when in chapter 18, we come back and the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee and no craftsman. Everything on this earth is going to burn up because it's all, it's all corrupt. And he says, and whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of the millstones shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of the candle shall shine no more. You're not going to have any light. It's going to be all darkness in heaven. So since we are listening to the greatest blessings in the world is to know Christ, and now he says for all of us, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. There is no joy in the world except through Christ. There is no peace in the world except through Christ. So here we see as we come to Revelation 19. And after these things I heard, this is us in heaven now. A great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation. There's four hallelujahs in verse chapter 19. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged, avenged the blood of his servants in her hand. We are to be everybody. We were taught when we were growing up to be virgins. There is no other way for every woman and every man. And this is why we are to give the word of God out. And he says, true and righteous. And again, they said, hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Verse 4 of 19. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, amen, hallelujah. And verse 5. Now, these are the people that have gone to heaven. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his saints, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it was the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth all knowing. He's, he knows everything we have, every thought that we have. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. That's what we are called. That is us. And you see, when you know that, this is the most amazing story in the world. First John 5, 4, Whatsoever is begotten of God overcometh the world. 1 John 5, 4. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's why we are in heaven. We have been saved by the blood of Christ. And then, and to her, this is Revelation 19. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of Christ. We have his righteousness. That's our life. And this is, listen at this now. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. For he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. This is nothing like this. Now, I read this to you before, and I'm going to read it again. These are for you that are lost. In Revelation 19, verse 10, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant of my brethren, that they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is a blessing that everybody has to understand and know, and know what he is doing. And now this is the other, this is a good thing. And now the Revelation 21, 
He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I'm going to give these over to you again because you have to hear them twice. And then now this is Revelation 21, verse 8. But the fearful, you're never to fear. You're never to worry. He's, he's our whole life, every promise. I will, this is amazing. And murderers and whoremongers, if, you're, if you hate somebody, you're a murderer. And sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. For the, this is the second death. And then after this, it's too late. So you see the joy in heaven the four hallelujahs that we have, and then we come to the time when this is going to happen. The marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of the Lamb is the most blessed and happy of all events that have occurred so far in creation. The most, this is when we're going to be having this supper in heaven. And he says, the four hallelujahs, men praise to Jehovah. Every one of us, how much time do you spend with him? He gives us 24 hours a day. How much time do we give him? You see, when we see this and we know what he, he has done, he that spared not his own son, the beatings that he went through. You see, people don't realize how he was beaten with a leather thong, with 12 pieces of leather, pieces of bone and metal in it. 39 times, he, all his body was open. All his skin was opened. And he did that for us and shed his blood that we could have eternal life. And look at this. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Every day of every moment, I have lived the abundant life, and I'm 86, and I'm here for you, every person that don't know Christ. And that is the only thing in life. For God so loved you, Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the whole world. And every moment after that, he dwells in us with his pure blood, with everything that he's given to us. The Spirit of God dwells in us. We have to have the Spirit of God to teach us the truth, the Word of God. And then you won't sin against a God that has given you all of these and then all of heaven forever and ever where there's no more pain, no more tears, no more sorrow. It's nothing but glory. And then you think about the people that's in this place. Look at that. That's what hell is like. And he did not make hell for people. I have to say that over. And these are the people in chapter 6 of Revelation. They know what happened to them. And you can read chapter 6. And they are crying for the rocks and mountains to fall on them. That's the beginning of this awful time of the Great Tribulation, seven years do what this book says today, and if you don't have a Bible, just write to me and I'll be sure. And you can get me on YouTube. I'm there. The, all of the messages are free, and that's Good News Program and Children's Missionary Stories. And you can watch them every day. And that's why I'm here also. And I wanted to tell you about what God has done for my health. At 86 years old, I've never had an alcoholic drink and never had smoked. I have a perfect body that he has given me. And the Bible verse is, I never take any, any medicine, never sick. And I have the abundant life and don't ever have pain. And I want you to know this Bible verse so you can use it for yourself. First Thessalonians 5.23 The God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God that my whole spirit, 
soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to tell you how my health is in case I go to heaven and you'll hear all of these and you can remember everything that God has done for me, the abundant life and joy unspeakable and full of glory. And I've served him for over 40 years for the glory of God. And I thank God for each of you. I'm going to see you in heaven.